Hey guys, Don here. Uh, welcome to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Um, I'm going to be going over today uh, uh, a kind of a high overview of a million dollar mini course. And uh, I, I put this together. Uh, as this 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 will be a, a kind of a series of slides. And uh, I call it a million dollar mini course because this is where I want to kind of bring your practice. My desire is to help you get past the million dollar mark in the next 12 months by working smarter and not harder. Now, there's a way to accelerate this. Everything that I talk about doing monthly, uh, there's a book out there. I don't know if you've heard about it. It's called The 12 Week Year. So take everything that's done monthly. You can kind of cram it down into weekly and it'll kind of give you some people it helps with more excitement. Um, if you want to have uh, these resources, I'm going to give you the resources that I wish I had in, in private practice. So why is this free? Well, because I, I like to help you succeed in practice, and I don't want you to make the same mistakes I made along my journey. Um, I'm going to give you many as many resources as I can in, in our time uh, over this next 12-week uh, course. Um, if you want to, you can refer to my YouTube videos, podcasts, and practice mastery to go more in depth. This is just kind of a high overview of what it takes to bring your, your practice um, to the million dollar mark. I would use this if you're in private practice under a million, and if you're kind of training new doctors in your practice as well. Uh, kind of the high overview we're going to look at, um, going to do an intro, get you to know your numbers, uh, the different topics we're going to look at. Um, so the, you have to pick what you're going to focus on. So if you're going to take 12 weeks or 12 months and you have to you have to do something, you have to know your numbers, you have to increase your per visit value, frequency of visits, the number of patients. This is the top three. Now within these three, okay, we're going to go into the other aspects. And, and what I mean by that, like for example, if you're going to increase the per visit value, to, one way to increase it is to do more DME or do more in-office dispensing or orthotics or procedures. So a lot of these fall into the, the category of increasing your per visit value. But that's what we that's what we can focus on. OK, uh, I have a couple of other topics such as like avoiding burnout. This is something that I kind of I deal with and then how to 10x the quality of your patient care. I think a quality experience as well. Uh, more than seeing more quantity, you can see uh, better quality patients. Uh, and then I also uh, the last two topics are personal improvement and personal effectiveness, which I think uh, greatly help us in our practice as well, just to, to improve. The more we improve, the more our practice is going to improve. And then uh, I, I'm going to give you my yearly tracking. You can do it yearly, you can do it weekly, and this improvement process. Now, this may change what you're seeing right now. This is a Google Doc that I'm going to be using. I'm going to make it available to you, but it may change as, as things go on. I'm going to start with this tracking. Uh, this is what I do. I currently do it in the back of my journal, kind of it's written out where I look at certain numbers. Um, this is a tracking sheet, you can see here it has January to December. You could just as easily put week one to week 12 here if you want to speed this whole process up. Um, put your what your per visit value is today. Um, and if you don't know how to do that, you probably should figure out how to do that uh, because that's what, what's going to really kind of make everything work better. You're going to use this tracking sheet to track the most important numbers, such as revenue, new patients, orthotics, shockwave, whatever you want to improve. Okay, so um, I, I didn't make a ton of spots because... Um, the, the, yeah, you only have a few key numbers you can focus on. Uh, what I tend to look in here is like I produce, like I want to get it into the eighty to hundred thousand dollar mark. So I would put like my my monthly revenue right here. So if I can, I know if I'm if I'm at eighty per month, eighty to hundred, then I'm going to get to my million dollar mark. What what are the key indicators that get me there? Is usually like orthotics and like shockwave. So I, that's why I track those numbers. So I, I would write in orthotics, shockwave, things like that. So just pick a few things you're going to track over the next 12 weeks or the 12 months. If you're in a hurry, I would do the 12 weeks. And then if you're uh, not, you could do the 12 months. Uh, and then this is the personal improvement process that I recommend you doing either each month or each week. This is the way I, I think about it. So you sit down and you're talking about per visit value, kind of what's working well, what's not working well, what would I, what can I do differently? And what's one action I'll take to improve it? Um, this is this is something that you can do each month. It's never going to get boring. It's always going to change. And so you could just print this out. This is what I would recommend. Print pages six, seven, and eight. It's the same questions. Pick, print those three pages or whatever, four pages if you want. And um, put those uh, on your desk. And then each week or each month, you fill out fill out your numbers and you pick one of the categories to work on. Just just one per week or one per month, whatever you want to do. So that that's that whole idea of uh, of doing that. So let's let's get into this um, this million dollar mini course. Um, this is once again, it's just a high overview uh, of this. 
this is uh, actually something I made on um, one of the like um, AI things. I, I gave it the idea of million dollar minute course and it made it made it through AI. So we're not going to go too much into AI, but this is um, one thing that, that you can you can do. So let me let me do this little introduction here. Uh, let me see if I can get you a little bit more light here <laughs> so you can see me. So I'm at my home office here before work. This is when I like to, to do this stuff. So you're going to drink, drink some coffee with me as we go into this. So introduction, who is this for? This is for anyone that's not at the million dollar mark. And uh, I wasn't at the million dollar mark. Um, and I'm going to kind of go over the, what were the things that kind of helped me get there. Why a million dollars? Well, because um, that, sh that shows a really kind of healthy practice. And this is your, your, your gross, kind of what you're grossing. And then a lot of us in our practices, we net or we take in 30% of that. So if you gross a million, you would take home about 300,000, which is, I think is a, a good amount for a person producing in your, your, whatever the doctor owner would be happy with that. How much time did it take me? Um, the, my, my really biggest uh, tip, this is what I found is that you have to be busy enough. You have to kind of know your numbers. And you, I, I found the best kind of the tipping point for me was using a scribe. Um, so it doesn't have to be harder. It can actually be a little bit easier because you can focus more on your patients. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, number one is knowing your numbers. I know this sounds funny, but my backstory is I really had no interest in numbers. I tracked at the end of the year. I didn't really look at the numbers, what I was producing. I didn't know what number I needed to produce. And this kind of made a little bit um, challenging for me because I, I wasn't able, and I was just frustrated. You know, I was always in the 50, 60, 60,000 a month type of thing. And uh, if you look at some of my previous um, YouTube videos where I talk about, I did a monthly kind of looking at my numbers each month and, and what I was producing then, I was never able to get to the million dollar mark, um, possibly because I just didn't have enough patience or because I wasn't producing enough with each patient. That's what I'm going to show you. So you need to know your per visit value. And within my EMR, I have Athena and I can kind of look at it. Um, and so that's something that I would, um, kind of recommend that, that you do here. Um, how many patients do you need to reach the million dollar in revenue? Um, I'll kind of show you how to do that. How do you track your numbers? I would use that other page I just showed you previously. Um, and how do you track your daily production? Um, the way I I've shown this before is to track your, your numbers. I, I use my monthly report that comes out. That's why I do it monthly. My daily production, basically, I just print out my sheet with patients that day. And on there, I'm going to, I have a, I have an area on the left column where I put what level office visit it is. I have a column for like imaging in, in, and then I have one for DME and then any, any other special things. And if you listen to the podcast that I have, I sometimes call the MVP, the most valuable patient. So I'm, and I try to pick one out each day. Like what's my most valuable patient that um, that's going to be good for the practice just to kind of keep my eyes on the prize. That's what I do. So you can, if you want to listen to my podcast, when you, when you, when I talk about those um, you can kind of see what I focus on. You don't have to track everything. I just track like what's the things that I want to focus on, like shockwave or, or amnio injections or things like that. I always say, focus on your largest check. Um, you can't focus on everything. And this is a mistake I made in the past. I was focusing on like having everyone come back and having every, every ingrown toenail come back. When I wasn't as busy, that was okay. But now I kind of spread out things that have a, a lower, like let's say it's a level two office visit follow-up. I'm not going to have them come back as much or not have them just send a picture to me. I want to focus on the threes and the fours. And I want to focus on those that are um, producing more revenue. Okay. Um, so how do you track it? So if you work 50 weeks a year, you get two weeks off or, or more. Um, you need to produce $20,000 per week or $80,000 per month um, or $4,000 per day. That's why it's so important. That's why it's hard for, for me to go and like lecture about this stuff. At least right now, um, because to, to pay me, I would have to go out for $4,000 per day just to cover what I'm not producing in the practice, unless I had other doctors and there's a couple of other partners I have, but not enough associates. Um, so that's where it's not really feasible for a lot of us to, to travel around and do things like that. So one of my errors in the past is I was always wanting to take off time before I was ready. And um, thankfully my partner was nice about it, but I used to always take off Fridays or Mondays. And that was nice, but it, it, it didn't allow me to get to my million dollar mark. Now I probably can, because I'm producing more because of my scribe, but you have to figure out a way to produce if you want to produce that much. Okay. So another thing is when I talk specifically about per visit value 
to get to that $4,000 per day, if you produce 200 per visit, you'd only need to see 20 patients. If you produce 100 per visit, it's it's 40 patients. So it's double the patients. So if you're only um, doing low level things, um, it, it's it's going to take a lot more patients to see. That's going to be a lot more of a struggle. So my recommendation is always if you can limit some things. So let me show you a couple of things that, that have worked and I've made mistakes. So with routine care, I only do routine care Friday mornings. So it used to be all day Friday and, uh, and I only do it Friday mornings now. Not saying you can't produce more. Some people can produce great with, with routine. I just found that I produced a little bit more value with other things. Um, and I certainly do get my, um, my, my, my ABIs and pad nets and, and, you know, CDFEs, diabetic foot exams and things like that, but I just wasn't producing as much. So that's why I restricted the access for that. So that, that's something important for you to do, um, to restrict access for that. So there's three ways, uh, to get to a million. This wasn't my idea. This is a, a guy named Jay Abraham and, uh, everything else kind of flows from this. You can increase your per patient value. Uh, which I think is really important to, to do. Increase the frequency or number of your visits, and then increase the number of patients that you have. Um, increasing the number of patients can be a challenge, especially if you're an associate working for someone. So that's why I'm going to focus more on what you have control over, which is the frequency or number of visits and per uh, per visit value. So I'm going to go over these uh, these 12 things if I have time or if my kids don't wake me up here in the morning because they're still sleeping. Uh, right now it's like 7 a.m. before I go before I go to the to the clinic, I'm trying to get through this. Uh, and then what you're going to have is you're also going to have this PDF download so you can do that tracking sheet. And then the way I'm going to set it up is you are going to get um, you're going to get um, an, an email with this information, and then each month it's going to send out one of the modules to you to focus on. So it's going to kind of focus on month month one. You're going to focus on increasing your previsit value. What are the questions you can ask yourself? Then another one in month two. So it's going to always kind of have you focus on uh, a month later on. So it's going to kind of be this, I'm going to this, this email autoresponder. Once it finishes all 12, then it's going to start over again. So it's going to kind of keep you focused on that. Um, let me know if you are interested in doing it weekly. I can send it out weekly. Um, if that's an easier way of doing it, I may even give that option later on. Okay, so let, let's go into it. I'm not going to go super deep into all these because it's going to just take me way too long. Uh, but if you want to learn more about these, you would go to Podiatry Practice Mastery. Go to the, my, my, my Practice Mastery Academy. It's, I make it super cheap there uh, for you. It's $97 a month right now when I'm recording this. Um, for all the time it, it's <laughs> taking me. Uh, why do I charge? Because no one does anything unless you pay. That, that's why I charge. Not, you know, because I find if I, I used to give it away and no one did anything and I, and everyone says it should be a lot more, but I want you to use it and I, I want it to be available to everyone. That's why I keep it at that amount. Um, I do it as a subscription just because I can, I can keep the cost uh, down and I make sure that you're using it. So if I were you, and if you're interested in learning this, you would go in there and watch all the master classes. You would kind of go through it and then you would use the resources like use me to ask me any questions. Okay. So first let's talk about increasing your per visit value. So my backstory, my per visit value was very low and it's been gradually increasing over the years. So if you look at the trend in our office numbers, it's, it's trending up. So it's kind of started at 90, then it went to 100, then 110, then 120. And now some months it's 150 and it needs to trend uh, increasing. So what helped me to get those increases, right, was tracking using my treatment sheets and using my patient presentations. Um, you're gonna notice I'm gonna be mentioning a lot about that. So if you, if you haven't got my, my treatment sheets or my patient presentations, um, you should be getting those. Um, I'm just gonna take a little hiatus here and, and show you what I mean by that. Um, right here, um, I have um, my link tree to my patient presentations. This is what I use every single day in the office. So if someone comes in and this is available to everyone, if you go to patientpresentations.com, I, I give this out uh, to you. They're, they're, they're mine, but you can use them, right? So if you click on one here on, uh, for example, Achilles tendonitis, it's going to pop up uh, a, a Google Slides in full screen mode, okay? Uh, and this is what I do. Now, if you want the training on how to do this, it's within the Practice Mastery Academy, how to do all these things. But basically, you just go through it with the patient. So you pop it up on the computer and you go through yeah, how long have you had symptoms? What treatments have you tried? How does it impact your life? Why do you want treatment? What is Achilles tendonitis? The diagnostic exams and then my treatment evaluator. Okay. And this is I call, if you've listened to anything, it's called my money slide. Okay. Um, and I go over this with the patients. It's only a few slides. It's, it's always the same order. 
And, and this is the treatment sheet. So this is something new if you haven't seen this before. What these are, um, these are printouts that are in Google Docs based on each condition. Okay, so these, I, I actually have a little prescription pad that I use for a lot of my patients, but this is a kind of a next rendition. So it's the, the treatment sheet when the next appointment is imaging, healing and repair, reducing inflammation. So these are categories of treatments. And then I have a, uh, this goes to a blog post with a video that they can watch and it has our information in here. So they pr I print this off and I, and I give this to them. Okay, so however you want to do that, the, most of my, my, my presentations have this. Certainly, if you want mine, you would just go to uh, the Practice Mastery Academy and you can get them or you can make your own. Okay, it's pretty easy to do. Um, certainly feel free to do that. Okay. So that's what that's the basis for, for a lot of my increase has been doing that. Um, the treatment sheets and the patient presentations. So remember, higher per visit value equals less patients. So low hanging fruit, don't get lazy. Um, this is one thing, and, and I'm, I shouldn't call it lazy. I, I wasn't lazy. The problem is I was overwhelmed with too many things. And um, so yeah, you have to make it easy for yourself. I found the ultimate simplification for me has when I see patients is I just pull up the presentation. I don't, I don't skip anything. Um, I don't ad lib. I, I just do it the same way every time. And it makes sure I offer what's the most effective treatment for the patients. Okay. So doing the patient presentation is helpful. Um, the treatment sheets as well. And then, um, practicing scripts for answering questions. A lot of times if I have additional questions, I will include them into the presentation. Um, in the past, I was always, as you can see here, I was always too busy. I forgot, I skipped things um, until I made the, the, the presentations and the treatment sheet. So that way with the treatment sheet, you can't skip anything. I guess you cannot talk about it, but sometimes the patients will ask you. So I have ways of doing this that make it a lot easier. That's how you increase the per visit value, in my opinion. Um, so all, and a couple other things, you know, all patients have a follow-up visit, you know, even, you know, come in for a fungal toenail, you take a nail sample, they come back in two weeks or something to go over the results. Um, imaging, uh, x-rays and ultrasound, kind of using those, automating, training your staff how to use those. In-office dispensing, we're going to go in more in depth, DME, covered procedures, self-pay procedures, and orthotics. Um, offer a comprehensive treatment. I did talk... Um, uh, one of my other colleagues, um, Matt, and I said back, what's the one thing that if you could help people to get to the million dollar mark, uh, he said, Don, um, get, having comprehensive treatment. So just offering to treat what they have there, you know, let's say they come in for heel pain, but they have nail fungus. Hey, once the, once the heel pain has gone, do you want to, does that nail fungus bother you? Um, and so that that's important. And what else do they have? Let, let's treat that. Do you want help with this? Um, do you want help with this? Do you let us treat this. So, but also only speak and market to what you want. Okay. I can't emphasize that enough. This is a mistake I made in the past. So if you look at my previous YouTube videos and all those stuff I was producing, I was producing, talking about everything. I was really just saying, Hey, I do everything. And, um, I, I learned this, um, from, uh, there's a book called 10 X is easier than two X. And, uh, it talks about kind of focusing on what produces the most revenue, not saying I don't, I don't treat, I, I still treat everything, right? When it comes in, I'll treat it because I, I, I do treat it, but I don't, I don't speak to it. So I don't put it out there. I'm not, it's not on my I'm prominent on my website. If I don't want to do nails, I, I'm not going to put nails on my website, right? If I don't want to do, you know, uh, routine care, I'm not going to put that on the website. Will I do it if it comes in? Yes, but I have restricted times that I do it, but you only speak to what you want to see. If you can take one thing away from increasing your per of value, it would be, it would be that. Okay. Um, increasing the frequency of visits. This is number two. Um, so what I would say is, is if you're finishing the first month, you're going to uh, increase your per visit value, kind of write down what, what's working, what's not working, what you can do to improve in that. Okay. So uh, week two is increasing the frequency of visits. Um, this is something that you need to have them have a perceived value. Okay. This is something in the past. I didn't quite understand my, my buddy, my partner, Neil, he was a Don, they have to like perceive that you're giving them something that's why they're coming back, whether it can be just giving them compassion, giving them, showing interest in them, teaching them something, um, giving them resources. They have to perceive the value. Otherwise, they're not going to want to come back. Um, have everyone come back. That That's a key. It's just a matter of kind of when they're coming back. All diabetics come back in once a year. You know, routine care come in every three months. Um, shockwave, they come in like three times or three to six times. This is where we kind of get lazy is we're not having people come back or we're not giving them enough of value. Okay. Um, something that helps with this is kind of packaging. So doing, let's say three to six EPATs, doing um, laser treatment, setting up three or four of those 
with Swift or however you want to do that. Um, display value, connect, and teach. And I think this is real important for, for frequency of visits. So giving them something when they come in, that's where I give them the treatment sheet. I have a purpose for them coming back. Um, I made a mistake in the past. <clears throat> I, I um, had a patient that uh, their nail was almost coming off and I pulled it off. And I said, oh, why don't you just come back in two weeks? Well, I didn't really do anything in that two weeks when they came back after I had avulsed the nail. So now I kind of change it. So if I can't really give them any value, I'm not going to have them come back. Also, if it's a level two visit, I'm not going to have them come back. So it's something that um, you have to kind of be be careful with. I, I'm not I'm not having them come back as much for some of these smaller things. I know everyone should come back, but if it's something real simple, it's going to be a waste of their time to come back. I, I would prefer not having them come back unless I can kind of show them what's the reason for doing that. We also have some cool automated things with our EMR. Um, there's an, there's a way to automate it. So if people haven't been seen in a year, it automatically sends them an email uh, at one and two year increments. Uh, so if you want to help with that, just shoot me an email, Don at podiatrypracticemastery.com. Um, we have a call list uh, for patients. So if they haven't been seen in the last three years, my staff calls out to them and then kind of yearly reminders. Those are the yearly reminders for visits. That That's something important to get people back. Uh, another thing that really helps us is we do a newsletter. Uh, so everyone's on my email list. They get a, a weekly newsletter. There's different opinions, but that's just one of the most fun things. I never used to like to do it. I, I tried different renditions in the past. I used to do like a video newsletter and then I did a um, print newsletter. And now, excuse me, now these days I'm doing a print one. Okay. So I'm gonna try to get done here by, cause I gotta go to work. <laughs> At 7.30. So number three, uh, increasing the number of patients. So the backstory with this is um, I didn't market from day one. That was my big error, okay? Because I came in, took over another doctor's practice and was super busy from day one. So if I could do it over again, I would have start, I would have start marketing right away, like doing videos, uh, visiting doctors. I did go visit doctors. So in the beginning, uh, he did introduce me, went to all visit all the doctors. And I think that was something important. Um, other family members, I always ask about that. Who else in the family can I treat? Visiting centers of influence, these are different referral sources. Um, this is something in the, in the beginning, I kind of made the mistake of not doing this as much uh, because I was really busy. But the problem is you always have to fill the funnel right? So um, you have to figure out a method of doing this, whether it be automated, whether it be you taking some time to do this or having some uh, uh, a, a rep for your practice, but this is, or even just making contact. The other day, there was a new doctor that took over for an established doctor. So I gave them a call or, you know, and I said, Hey, can I set up a time to talk to the doctor? So that's going to be coming up. So things like that, you have to always do one thing a day, that you can fill your funnel. And it's better to fill your funnel uh, with people that can send over multiple patients versus that ones that can send just one patient. There's internal, external marketing. I don't want to go over this um, too much, but uh, in the past, I, I, I thought I wanted to do wounds or actually my partner wanted me to do wounds and I realized I didn't want to do wounds. So um, I don't do many wounds, uh, but if you do wounds, that's great, but only speak to what you want to see. So don't, if you don't, if you don't want to do wounds, don't speak to it. So if you look at my videos, mostly it's talking about shockwave, um, different procedures, uh, things like that. Uh, another way to increase number of patients is online reviews. This is where the majority of our patients come from these days. So we have ways of on, on doing, getting more Google reviews. We have, use something called patient education genius. You can look that up, uh, and patient pop for our website, which just asks for online reviews. Uh, advertising, we don't do too much. We've done some type of ads in different places. We didn't see the, there wasn't much um, juice with the squeeze there. Okay. Just you hear that pounding. My kids are going to be coming down here soon. So if you see them photo bombing me here, um, that's what they do in the morning. Okay. Uh, so number four is uh, durable medical equipment. Custom versus non-custom. So the backstory behind that is um, everyone gets DME certainly you have to get set up and things like that. Guide them versus asking them. I don't ask them if they want it. I said, well, you know, this is how we do things here. Mine's called the Pelto Special. Uh, so everyone with Aquinas, which is pretty much everyone, is going to get a night splint, a foam roller, and a morning stretch. So morning stretch with the towel, night splint, and then foam rolling. Okay. Um, I hear the kids coming down. So you get to meet my kids if they pop up here. <laughs> Um, so everyone, the, the, but the way I do this is with the treatment sheets and my patient presentations. That's how everyone gets the DME because they're included in that presentation. So let me just go back to Achilles tendonitis. Uh, so if you look here, this is the treatment sheet, right? So they're going to be getting uh, night splint home therapy, which is like the foam roller. They might get an AFO. Uh, they might get a walking boot, uh, things like that. So that, that's how I do it um, with my, with those things. Okay. Be careful of uh, same and similar. I'm not going to go into that in too depth. In too depth, um, start with a few things that you like with DME. 
um, cam boot, surgical shoe, night splint. The things I use the least I have, but I don't do a lot of wounds. So I have collagen. I have little boxes, um, those box kit things, but I don't do a ton of it because I don't do a lot of wounds. But when wound comes in, I use it. Velocity braces, I don't do a ton of. Um, ankle braces, I don't do a ton of, but I do a lot of, of all these other things, right? Um, but I have them in case I need them. So I, I have custom things as well, a lot of custom AFOs. I have a whole masterclass within uh, Practice Mastery Academy that goes over doing more uh, DME, doing more orthotics. Um, specific to in-office dispensing, um, the backstory, like once again, the, it was the presentations and the treatment sheets that helped me dispense things. Because if it's not offered to the patients, it's not going to be done. So um, for example, I have uh, within my fungal treatment uh, process here, I can go back and show you this one here for nail fungus, if you just scroll down. And even if you just want to kind of steal how I things, how I do things, that, that's fine with me. Um, within nail fungus, I have um, my kind of my process of how I explain it to patients. Um, different questions. I talk about terbenafin. I talk about um, different things like that, Take, taking a nail sample, the different treatment options. Okay. But the, but the cool thing is this is something new. It's this treatment sheet. So within the treatment sheet, um, I use this to say what we're going to do. So when they initially come in, I, I don't give this out, but it's at the second visit. I, I say, I'm going to review the results. I order the LFTs at these, one of these places, they're going to get oral antifungal. Um, they're usually doing biotin. Um, and then um, if anyone else in your household has a similar complaint, they should get treated. And then to prevent recurrence, this is where they're going to get my UV light and then my antifungal shoe spray, changing towels, alternating shoes, and disinfect your shower. So they're going to get this stuff and um, and and they get this printed out. There's a little video that they can watch. And then when they come for the follow-up, I do like a booster prescription. And then I also, after everything's done, I give them a topical antifungal once a week to, to prevent any skin recurrence because the skin can go to the, the nails. Okay. So that's how I do it. Um, a couple of the things that are beneficial when I do this antifungal, I get a level four visit, right? When I do this one at the end, I get a level four because it's a prescription, right? So that kind of boosts you up. And this is how I do it now. So when they come back for the follow-up, I give them this. I don't usually do it the first one, but it's the follow-up. And so I, I have this for other things that I that I treat as well. So this might might be beneficial for you is using that. That helps me with my in-office dispensing, okay? Um I tell the staff, um, uh, tell the staff so they can ask. So my, my staff is also aware of how to, uh, I teach them how to do things. Um, I try not to offer what they sell on Amazon because they're always, they're always going to compete with you um, and make it part of the way we do things like a Marigel post-op kit. You know, that's just kind of the way we do it. So that's in office dispensing. Orthotics, don't want to go into orthotics that much. All I would say is track it because a big portion of my revenue each month comes from orthotics. Um, in the In the past, so the key, uh, right? In the past, I was waiting for the second or future visits to do orthotics. I find that patients, when they initially come in, they're more um, willing to do orthotics when they're in a lot of pain. Um, so I, I tended, and I made a mistake in the past, was waiting for second visits. I didn't have any great wording. Uh, I didn't watch them walk. So now I watch them walk. I have a great wording, a great presentation. I have a specific uh, master class on orthotics within the academy. I can't go over everything, but in there, I explain how to how to always offer two pairs of orthotics. Um, the one thing that produces the, the, the most income is the orthotics in, in my practice. So um, I track that and I try to get better at it. Once again, orthotics are included in my patient presentation and my treatment sheets as well. Okay. If you can do one thing is learn how to do that better. Um, there are some videos I've had, I have included in the, in the Academy that teach you how to do this better, find doctors that are really good and watch them. That's, that's the, really the key. Okay. But if you want, if you have any questions, reach out to me, I'm not going to go too much in detail, but you, this should be improving. Okay. Covered procedures. There are tons of procedures we do. Once again, I have a specific master class talking just about this, um, but the procedures are included in my presentation. So if you like, uh, if you're talking about calluses, there's one on exostosis. I talk about if, if you have a, a haglins, it talks about the speed bridge. If you have an ingrown toenail, it's going to talk about a matrixectomy or a, an IND. So I have all these within the presentations and on the treatment sheet. So it just makes it automated. Basically, um, I always add ultrasound as an add-on. So in all my presentations like on um, Achilles tendon, on, on Achilles, let's do forefoot pain. So on metatarsalgia or plantar plates or, or things like that, um, the presentation, so you have the, the, the forefoot pain. And then I also have an ultrasound here that, that kind of shows people. So I say, you know, we're going to start 
with treating you, but that the follow up, we're going to do the ultrasound. So that's how everyone gets an ultrasound. If you want to learn more, I have a whole masterclass just on ultrasounds. Okay. Um, those are kind of the covered procedures. There's tons of them that we do. Um, I, well, just a simple one I wasn't doing is doing a fracture code. That's kind of considered a procedure. Uh, number eight, paid procedures. Um, I, I, I didn't believe it really worked in the beginning. Uh, Shockwave, that's why I didn't do as much. So you need to do something to, to build your confidence, whatever you're using. Um, you have to learn how to talk about pricing. I, I have a whole module talking about pricing. You want to add them slow. I would recommend buying the best, learning to use them, do it for free in the beginning, and then get training. This is the key. So I have a, a lot of training. If you have any questions with, about any procedures or imaging or things like that, let me know. I have uh, some doctors that come over. Uh, usually every six weeks, I help one doctor within uh, Practice Master Academy. Basically, it's via WhatsApp. And kind of you ask me questions and I give you guidance and then you come and visit me in the office. And that's something, that's something fun fun to do and fun for you. So if you want to interested in doing that, uh, send me an email, okay? Uh, avoiding boredom and burnout. This is something that was a little bit hard hard for me in the beginning is I, I did get a little bit bored because um, we do the same thing over and over. Um, and I was really not bored of treating patients because I enjoy that. I just didn't like doing the notes. So that's where the scribe really, really helped me out. Um, if I can produce $100,000 more, it pays for my scribe. That's why I think of it. Okay. Um, uh, do It didn't, he doesn't cost me 100000 right? But um, it's a 30% draw. Okay. Uh, so you have to do what you enjoy. Um, visit other offices. I think that's important. If you want to come visit me, let me know. Um, I need accountability, buddy. That's where I try to help with people when I, when I kind of coach them. Um, get enough staff. I think that's key. Otherwise, we're, we're doing too much. And consider a scribe. I was really kind of burnt out. It gives the patients a really a better patient experience. I don't skip anything now. I just kind of do my presentations, do the treatments, write things down, and then like they do everything else. And it really helps me be present with the with the patients. Okay. Um, number 10, this is something real important. Um, we want to give better quality care for our patients. And so this is the way I kind of think about it. With quality care, um, what do you want to do more of? You want to do more of, have them wait less, easier paperwork, giving them videos after each practice, patient education genius, online reviews, watch a video before they come, um, clear treatment process, offer advanced treatments, not like everyone else, write out their plan. These are all the things I'm doing. What I want to do less of, I don't want them to wait. Uh, I don't want them to be rushed. I don't want to be rushed. Um, that's what the notes really kind of caused me to do. Not really care, not comprehensive. I didn't want to type all the time. So look at the things that you don't want to do that's making your your patient care worse and try to fix those, right? I didn't want to be looking at the computer. I didn't want to have, be sell, sell hard. So that's why I like the presentations and the treatment sheets and things like that. So what I want to do more of, I want to use a scribe, be comprehensive, good referral sources for everything. So I'm kind of a resource to my patients. So I have weight loss centers, shoe stores, vascular doctors, things like that. I want to wow them with a dynamic presentation. This goes from like um, even something simple with, with orthotics. I show them when I stabilize their heel and move their foot up and down and I stabilize their heel, it kind of, it kind of stabilizes everything. Thing. So I do that kind of as a dynamic demonstration for orthotics, how it kind of stabilizes the heel is kind of the, the anchor of the foot. Uh, and if you stabilize the heel, it's going to stabilize everything. I use a lot of analogies. I like to get to know my patients. So I start with small talk and I uh, train my staff. So these are ways to increase quality. I would recommend looking at that, you know, at a periodic basis. And then personal improvement. Um, I've always enjoyed uh, books to improve me. Uh, I felt odd. I, f I felt like I was a little bit different. Um, but then I found coaching and there's like-minded people. So I've been doing coaching at Strategic Coach for a number of years. Um, that's where I go. Um, I go to the academy meetings, I, I, AAPPM. I really uh, admire them. I think they do great work. I think Rem does great work. Chris Milkey does like all these people. Uh, 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 TJ on, he does great work. All these people are do great work. Um, you have to figure out what you're going to focus on. So you have to really, I would recommend automating your personal improvement. So what I do is I get two two audible books uh, per month. And then I can listen to those when I drive. And I also set time aside to work on myself and my practice. So this is where I have kind of a system each month that I'm telling you, you pick these 12 things, do these once a week or once a month. And that's your system for improvement. Okay. You can improve other things, but this is going to give you a, a triggered system. So you print these pages out that I gave you in the beginning and you kind of work on it. Okay. You can email it to me when you fill them out, email them to me. So we can, I'll be your accountability partner and um, help you with that. Okay. Personal effectiveness. Um, in, the, in the past, I wasn't really sure what to do. I had too many options. Um, I didn't have any buffer time at work to get things done. Um, so those are my mistakes I made in the past, but I, I'm, I'm really kind of into rituals, like what I do. So I have a ritual in the morning. I read the Bible, read a book. I plan my day. I have uh, time off for free days. This is something I learned at with my coaching that I did. Um, I have an accountability partner that I meet once a month. Um, 
I delegate a lot. There's a good book called Who Not How. I'm a big reader. I have a gratitude journal that I use, the five-minute journal, if you'd like that. Um, the planner I use is the Productivity Planner. That's the one I currently use. It's by the same person that does the five-minute journal. Uh, and then I do something called an experience transform. And that's the same thing I talk about in this, in this sheet I'm giving you, like what's working, what's not working, uh, what can I do different, what's my plan? That's how I kind of think about everything to kind of transform those experiences. It's, it's a topic that Dan Sullivan talks about within Strategic Coach. Um, so those are all important things. So, you know, I know this is quick, but what I'm wanting to give you is this. What's a, what's a dream come true experience for practice improvement? Okay. And, and I want a who in an automated process. This is what I want for me. And this is what I, what I want to give you. I want to give you something that can be done in between patients in my free moments. I want to do something that can keep me focused and give me energy. I want something that'll give me a 10 X improvement for my practice and something that will simplify with a simple question that can be trackable and that it could be done also by my staff. So I've put this together uh, in this. Now, it seems simple. It's really easy. It's written out and, and it might change as we go on, but this is how it is right now. So I would recommend you printing out this and just putting it on your desk or in your folder or in your backpack. I put it in my backpack and I and I each each week or each month, whatever you want to do, you could do week one, week 12 or you know each month. You kind of look at like, how can I increase the per visit value? I would go back and, and listen to that section on, on per visit value or all these other things. And uh, what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to send you some stuff each month. And I'll be kind of be adding to that, um, the stuff I'm going to send you. So once the 12 months are done, it's going to repeat. Okay. And it'll say week, you know, month, month, one, month, two, you know, things like that. It's going to kind of repeat. It's going to go in this loop and then you'll be filling this out and um, let me know of your progress. My email is down at podiatrypracticemastery.com. I want to get you to the million dollar mark. Um, let me know where you're at right now. Um, and, and if you're able to get there and if you have any questions, I'm, I'm happy to help. Okay. Hope you enjoy this. Hope this was beneficial. Hope you can get to the million dollar mark. I, I, I think that make your practice and your life and everything a lot, a lot better. Okay. Thanks. Nope. Oh. I don't know how to turn this off here. So I'm going to turn it off here one sec. Uh, but if you haven't, if you're interested in um, podiatry practice mastery, I have the practice mastery Academy um, on practice mastery. If you go there, there's a lot of resources on the bottom, like a lot of the treatment sheets, um, my everything else that I've talked about, a lot of the freebies. And then if you want to join the practice mastery Academy, I would recommend you join that. I keep it super cheap, $97 a month. You know, I have a number of doctors on there and they're always kind of adding doctors. Uh, I would, if you want to, if that would be beneficial. And one of the benefits is you can like kind of ask me questions and things like that. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to leave for real. Okay. Have a good day.